what does the office mean to me? Oh my God. See, I'm just like so in my head because it's like so emotional. It's like hard for me to tell any of these stories. Wow, that's a huge question. God, that's hard to put in the words. It means probably the greatest job I'll ever have. It means a second family. I feel so lucky. I mean, I feel so lucky, but in the biggest sense of the word. Like, not like, I feel really lucky to be on this show. It's, it's so much more than that. The honest answer is that The Office is my life. I was the first person who auditioned for The Office on the call sheet and had a number one and my name was the first one in that slot. And they brought in six of the seven of us and auditioned them and I was the last one left. Some guy sat across from me and said, you know, are you nervous? And I said, well, you know, you either get these things or you don't. And I said, but what I'm really nervous for is the people who are making this show because the British show is perfect and I just really hope we don't screw it up. And he's like, I'm Greg Daniels, I'm the executive producer. <laughs> and uh, I actually threw up in my mouth a little bit. The writing staff the first year, BJ and Mindy and I had never had any kind of actual job. <laughs> I knew who this person was. I knew exactly how he needed to be brought to life. And they told me that I was gonna be given the part of Pam Beasley on The Office. The first question I asked was, is John Krasinski gonna play Jim? And I remember getting the news that I got this show and I literally jumped up on a couch and screamed and thought that that was so cliche. <laughs> the role of Pam couldn't be done unless I had the right partner. And at the audition, I knew that he was my teammate. In the first season, no one was paying attention and no one had very high hopes for the show in like the world. And it felt like we were just off by ourselves and there were no parents around and we were making little short films for ourselves. And I remember Steve saying like, look, we got to make six and now it's been whatever, 200. <laughs> just so crazy. I have with John almost more than any other actor I've ever worked with, just like a kind of an unsaid rapport. It feels like jazz musicians like trading fours, you know, in a, in, a, in a solo. When Rain's on the exercise ball bouncing up and down, and I come over and I stab it with the, <laughs> with the scissors, in every other take we did, I stabbed it and it just slowly goes down, and the camera angle was that he just slowly ducked behind the thing, and it was incredible. In the last take, they were like, do you want more? And I remember going over and I went, boom, and I must have hit a seam or something. And it exploded. And he hit the ground as hard as I've ever seen a human hit the ground. And you, if you go back and watch that episode, I just go, whoop, and dive out because I'm crying laughing. As an actor, you never know when you're going to be written off a show or not. I knew that in order for the story to progress, it had to move in a different direction. One of my favorite moments is the episode where Jim takes Pam up onto the roof and they have grilled cheese sandwiches and they watch Dwight and Kevin light off the, like the dinkiest fireworks you've ever seen. And John and I sat there and ate cold grilled cheese sandwiches. And it was just a magical, magical moment that I did not want to end. In the episode where Jim and Pam's relationship is revealed to the office, the cold open was that Michael Scott finds out about it and has this sort of overwhelming like parental feeling about how, how happy he is and he grabs their hands and he went, my heart. My heart soars with the eagle's nest. It was a perfect Michael Scott moment. Like my heart soars like an eagle is ridiculous, but he can't help himself and he just keeps talking and then ends up saying something much worse. You know, my experience with Steve is he is all of those things that everyone says. He's the nicest guy you'll ever work with. I, almost every day was, I can't believe what he's doing right now. And I'm just watching, you know. One of my very favorites, which is also a fan favorite, is the uh, one called The Injury. Michael burns his foot in his foreman grill and Dwight rushes to get him. Hold and gets in a car accident and throws up all over his car and gets a concussion and his personality changes and he becomes friends with Pam. It was just so much fun to, to play Dwight and 
going into this kind of weird dementia. Outside of the show, one of my favorite memories is the night that Steve Carell won a Golden Globe for playing Michael Scott. That was the moment when we felt like we arrived because we'd had these low ratings and every week we thought we might get canceled. And then Steve got nominated for an award and then Steve won the award. And that was like, we did it! We did it! <laughs> we thought, it was like we all won the award that night. And then there's the time we almost all died on the, on the work bus episode, which we affectionately call the death bus. So I guess the things I remember are when we win awards or almost die. I think what helped it push through was a phenomenal cast and a really great writing staff and, a, and the perfect man for the job in Greg Daniels. Greg Daniels said in our first meeting, he's like, you know, American comedy is like this big ship, you know, a big like cruise liner. And if you can just point it one degree in the right direction, you can make a big, big difference. But you can't turn comedy that sharply. And I feel like that's what The Office did, is it took American comedy and it turned it one degree in the right direction. I think that there was something sort of like, it was lightning in a bottle for the entire cast and the entire creative team. One of the most special things about this show was when you would meet fans of the show and they would tell you about a time of hardship and how the show lifted their spirits. And the fact that people allowed you in their homes and allowed you to be with them through all these moments. I mean, our fans are the greatest people because they had to fight for us. Our fans are incredible. They are so loyal and so loving of the show and they so understand these characters and get behind them. I just, I love you guys. Thanks for watching this show and being part of this incredible experience. That's crazy. I was like, I expected all the rest of them to get emotional. That was like obvious choices, not me. I've been gone for years. But when you think about it in those big terms, it has affected my life forever. I hope that I never have to work at this location again under different circumstances. I hope that in my memory, When I drive down this road, our buildings are here and our set is here. I never want to come here and walk through that stage door and see anything else because that way it will always be there. I can't even think about saying goodbye to this show. But you're gonna make me emotional now. There's no way to begin to say uh, goodbye or to say thank you, which is really what I think we all want to say is uh, thank you to the fans. It was very meaningful to all of us that people watched the show and engaged with it and wrote stuff on the internet about it. That was very meaningful to all the writers early on, so thank you. I had so many people say like, the only time we're together as a family is when we're together watching The Office, and thank you for that. I can sit down with my mother and my son. We can all just laugh at The Office. That is an incredible service, bringing people together, you know, and making them laugh during the hard times. But also a thank you to each other for being everything <clears throat> we were to each other which was friends and family. And the people that I worked with on the show and the opportunities it gave me, I'm forever grateful. So, farewell and thank you. Thank you for watching and thank you to everyone for your friendship and your devotion. And I don't know, I don't know how do you say goodbye. How do you say that? <laughs> Goodbye, office. Goodbye, cast. I love you guys. Truly love you. One of our directors, Dave Rogers, said it best. He just said, thank you for this. Thank you. And I thought that summed it up. Thank you. The greatest honor that I've ever had and, and the, um, 
the thing I'm most proud of is uh, being a part of this. <laughs>